Okay, good morning, Advantage members. So it is the CPI data time. Uh, we just had CPI data come out about three minutes ago. Uh, it's Wednesday, August 10th. So the one thing that I talked about, you know, just before the data came out was um, if we are looking to position ourselves before the data or add to our positions, what we want is ideally uh, the uh, CPI data to come down a little bit. Okay. And then the core data, which is uh, uh, food X uh, energy to also come down. And as you can see, I think both kind of came down, you know, a, a little bit, which is a good thing. And so the market took that in stride. Here's what you could see right now. This is like the last, you know, five to 10 minutes. BTC popped almost two, two and a half percent. Uh, Ethereum, I think, popped about 3.5%. Uh, and then the rest of the market, as you can see, is just completely ripping, right? So um, this is a good thing, okay? I think the market has taken this and said, all right, well, you know, we're not really uh, super worried about inflation as of right now, okay? Because the data came in nice and hot. Um, so now what do we do? Positioning-wise, right, you guys know very well, we're already long ETH, we're long link. Um, I added to my link position and ETH position yesterday, as y'all can see, right? So I added yesterday live on video, $750 at 1680. Um, where's ETH? So ETH was kind of like coming down like this. And then I had also left another limit order at 1660 for another 750, which by the way, it got filled. Okay, because I think overnight, we hit all the way down to 1656. So we're we're fully sized up, I think, in our uh, ETH position. I, I think I can add a little bit more, but I don't know if I want to add like right away. Um, I if I get like a quick retest like this, I'm okay to add a little bit more around this level, which is 1735. Uh, if let's just say price keeps blowing up, then I'll add above this high. Okay, if we can break above this high and hold, then I'll add above that high because my ultimate target is. 1900 to almost you know 2000 like 200 or so okay that's like ultimately where i see uh btc um going and ethereum going is higher here's my four hour or you know uh longer term chart that i'm like viewing from this sort of perspective which is let's go to a six hour chart okay so on a six hour chart basis right Here's kind of kind of what I had in mind. This this is a previous level, sixteen thirty, right? That, in my opinion, has been turned as support. Okay, after this little W bottom or double bottom, then we had another level within that, which is sixteen sixty, right there. Which I believe now we've also turned to support with this style of W bottom. So now, I think the consensus here is that from here we start pushing up. We need to take out this high from two days ago, right? Which is around 1800 and some change. And we need to start pushing towards 2135, or let's just say, you know, $2,000 because that's such an even number. But 2135, why? Because that was a range high that Ethereum had back here that was capping price here in May. And the support was somewhere around, you know, uh, 17 to $1,800, which is these levels right here. So if we could climb inside this level, hold above 1735, right? So hold above 1735, what does that do? Well, it opens up the range from here to here, 1735 to 2135. That whole range is then opened up if we could successfully stay above 1735. So now what we need to see from the market is that post CPI data, which is now and in the next few hours, that we don't just completely shit the bed, that we continue on up, even if we get, let's just say, you know, a quick retest like this around the August monthly open on BTC, we need to start shooting up from here. Personally, I don't think we need to retest. I don't think we need to come back anywhere near the slow. I think we just need to leave everybody behind who shorted down here and just destroy them. I mean, like destroy them by just going bananas up, 
okay? Because all the data is on our side now. We have the CPI data that just came out, you know, pretty healthy. We have uh, um, the market conditions that swept uh, all the longs from late last week right there, okay? What else do we need? We don't need to start coming back again. If we start coming back again, we're truly, truly effed. Okay, that means that even with the CPI data print, we cannot even climb. And that's not a good thing. That means like we are royally screwed and we will have to start de-risking. Um, the market might start going down significantly. And these are things that I do not want to deal with right now because I personally think that the market has a much potential to the upside versus to the downside. Okay. Is that clear so far? Are we clear on our positioning? Are we clear on my big get positioning? As you can see, like I said, long ETH, long link, right? Both these are looking pretty good. In fact, I would want to probably add more on link because it sure as hell does not seem like I'm getting a pullback towards 8.1 or 8.0. Link is one of those strong, you know, looking assets right now. Let me pull it up real quick. Link is one of those strong looking assets that doesn't look like it wants to give up. You know, it looked like it flipped this area very perfectly from resistance to support. You know, if it has to come back, uh, and fill my 8.1. So I have two orders left behind on link, as you can see, at 8.0 and 8.1, right? Uh, these are, I think, $500 each. So 500 right there for 62 link and 500 there for 61 link. Um, and I'm hoping that those fill at 8.1 and uh, 8.0 down here. But I don't know if that's possible right now because link would have to basically turn around down here and then push up. And I'm not thinking to myself, why the hell would it do that, right? Like why would Link start coming down here all the way to fill 8.1 and 8.0 and then shoot up? So I'm ideally thinking that, okay, if BTC is sitting at this area and it starts pushing up higher, remember, we need to see BTC also break through 23,750, also a KSR level, why? previous resistance right there on 22nd of July, multiple points of support right there where we pushed up multiple times, broke down in a head and shoulders style pattern, rejected right there, broke down, broke up, failed again, sold off, right? So we need to get above 23,750 to establish a nice trend up in the market, okay? Until then, I mean, yes, it's possible that this whole move is a fake out and then we're going to get, you know, crapped all the way back down. It's possible. I don't think it's likely, but it is possible. But we need to smash above this level. This is a very important level. If I were you, I would start putting out alerts. You could throw alerts like this, set an alert, you know, price alert um, on BTC and say, oh, well, give me an alert if uh, BTC crosses above 24,000 or 23,950 or 24,1, you know, something like that. And if it does start doing that, then you can start adding on BTC as a long. You can start adding on Link as a long. You can start adding on Ethereum as a long, okay? Or whatever, you know, favor altcoin of your choice, right? The rest of the market, as you can clearly see, took that same CPI data news and just ripped up, okay? What's at the top of the list right now? We got Aave and Rune, DYDX, OneHarmony, Ethereum somewhere near the top of the pack, okay? So keep an eye on those, the ones that are at the top of the pack. All right, um, any questions? Anything else y'all want me to cover? It's a pretty simple day. This is the only thing that we were waiting for, right? There's really not a whole lot else that we needed to pay attention to today. The markets were already selling off yesterday in anticipation of bad and terrible news. Didn't need to deal with that today, right? If the market was already up here, I would have been way more paranoid because if the CPI data came out positive or even negative, it would have done this anyway. But the market took care of that before for us, did all this overnight, gave us a pretty nice you know, opportunity to stay long or get long right into the CPI positive data, and boom, we're up. Cool? So I'm long. Um, 
We're staying uh, long right now, at least I am. And then we'll go from there. Okay. I don't see anything else I want to talk about Bitcoin dominance. I think uh, dominance is just continuously grinding down. It seems like obviously alts themselves are outperforming BTC. So whenever that happens, you're going to see dominance get crushed. Um, what else? Uh, U.S. equities, you can see big pop right here in the S&P 500 futures. Not surprised. Again, CPI data came out positively. So of course, that's going to you know move up in a big way good thing, right? And that's, in my opinion, a great thing because by the time the U.S. market's open, which is in 45 minutes, okay, we want to start seeing this thing start pushing up higher or close near the highs by the end of the day, okay? Because if that's the case, the market is going to push a little bit higher, you know, much higher than maybe most people expect, maybe into this high, which is about 4,300 points. And if that's the case, if market pushes up to 4,300 points on the S&P 500, I think BTC has a pretty damn high chance of getting all the way towards 26, 27K up here by the time weekend or next week shows up. And if that's the case, Link is probably going to $10, okay, pretty easily in my opinion. I think Ethereum is probably going to 1950 to 2000. I think AVAX is going to 32 to 35, somewhere up here. I think uh, Solana is kind of weak, so I'm not going to talk about Solana a whole lot. I mean, it's not really been doing that well. Um, Rune, I think it can easily get back towards, you know, $3 and above, somewhere up here. Let's see what other altcoins are doing. Um, and most altcoins kind of moving up 4 or 5%. FTM is strong as shit. I don't know why, but this thing has been like, you know, putting in bigger percentage moves than most of its other altcoin peers. Same thing with Near. All right. Keep an eye on Near as well. It could probably tag $6 and maybe slightly higher um, if sort of, you know, the, the market keeps continuing up. Okay. Those are really the only ones on my list. Right. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, you can see BTC trying to inch its way higher above 23.750. See that level we spoke about? It's at 23.8. We need to see a big candle move through this level, through the level, okay? You never want to see volume high right into resistance because if, if there's high volume into resistance and the price then starts moving down, that means a lot of buying happened, but nothing really budged the price up higher, right? In fact, it could be said that there was a lot of absorption happening here. So let's check out the volume real quick, All right? Big volume. Now we need to see continuously higher volume and you know consistent volume through this level. Then I'll be convinced that, okay, we're bottom, boom, game time. Oh, you want me to check out BAT? Yes. So I mentioned to, uh, BAT to Advantage members just yesterday, right? BAT USDC or USDT, I mean, it doesn't matter, whichever pair. Um, so I was, let me, let me pull this up real quick. Um, yeah, so that, I mean, obviously again, that moved down in last night's session, same with Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now it's starting to trend up, right? I think, I think that has basically cleared all this stuff. Look at that, right? So if we zoom in, a little bit closer, here's what BAT did, which I like, all right? It took out all these higher lows, swept that shit, and now is pushing, pushing up, right? So now we need to see BAT start closing above these levels and you could add long there. You can even add long if BAT stays above this marker, which is 0 0.435. See that marker right there? So you can add on that right there. Keep in mind, however, as I said, you need to start seeing BTC maintain above 23,750 um, and start seeing the market continuously you know, push up. If, if this keeps happening like through the rest of the day, pretty sure BAT is going higher. And on a daily basis, BAT okay, has a potential to reach all the way up here around 60 to six, or 65 to 67 cents in the coming days or weeks. And that's about a 50% move. All right. Cool. How am I feeling about Filecoin? Um, well, like I said, you know, we had that trade. Um, I was a little unhappy with how BAT 
or not that, sorry, uh, Filecoin was trading, you know, here's what I see, right? I think that this, I think I've already mapped this out, right? On a 30 minute chart. So let's do this. Let's open this 30 minute chart to a one hour and four hour and this one to a one hour and four hour. So we can see the chart in a range more clearly. This is the range. Okay, this is the range of uh, Filecoin. Now, whether this is an accumulation range or a distribution range, I don't know, okay? But I do know that this low is holding and is high, right? Deviation, lower high, breaks down. So that means that price is being capped between this high and this low. Until one or the other breaks, meaning price is able to sustain above this high and push up, or price is able to sustain below this low and push down, until one of those happens, this is just range bound. You long here, close here, short here, close and cover down here. I think that's a range play. That's it. That's all I can say. The reason I closed Filecoin is because BTC and the rest of the market was giving me weird signals uh, last week, right? On August 2nd or 3rd, whenever this move happened. Okay. So I said, screw it. You know what? Let me find um, another opportunity. And guess what? Um, we're going long, we're sitting long in Ethereum and Link. Now we're good, right? We just sit tight, let the market do its thing. Um, and, then we, the, and then we just collect our profit, okay? So I would say there are better opportunities out there, but if you're still already in a Filecoin long, you could stay long, just set your stop below this low. That's it. You could trim at this high, if price stays and maintains above this high, then you add to your long again, right? Because Filecoin, I could kind of see that Filecoin has a um, higher potential for a percentage move than Bitcoin and Ethereum. I get that, right? From here, Filecoin can move up 20, 30% just to get back to its you know, local high. And it can easily go to $15 or $14, which is my original target. That's about a 65 to 70% move. Right. So I could see the reason why you may want to stay along in Filecoin or add to your long. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Anything else I can cover? All right, everybody. That is it. I think. Uh, let me see here. What's going on? See if we can look at uh, BTC. I mean, it looks good. Would be nice. Would be nice if we just see a quick wick to the downside and then start to close back up. I would want to add on that. Um, let's see how ETH is doing. And if we don't need to add on ETH or LINK, we will just uh, enjoy the day. Okay, enjoy the day, stay long. And uh, let me see here, we're at 1800. Okay. I think we're okay for now. I think we're okay. I I, I would say uh, at this particular point, I don't feel that comfortable longing here. If I do, maybe very small size, but uh, you know, say Ethereum gets above its local high, say BTC starts pushing above 24.3 or somewhere up here. I don't know. I mean, I feel like that's a better opportunity to add to longs once BTC gets up here, once Ethereum gets up here. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, good luck. Take care. Talk soon. Cheers.